Nepotism is rampant in the entire music industry, and the debate over the positives and inherent negatives of having already established connections has been in the realm of debate in the industry for decades now. The ability to have access to rooms and circles inside the industry is an invaluable tool, and one that has seemingly been abused more than it's been rightfully used. Like Jane Smith's individualistic persona doing everything it can to make you forget that he's Will Smith's son, or Claro's seemingly self-made bedroom pop career having some major influence from her father, who runs philanthropic organizations with ties to the Grammys as well as being the VP of Hear Music, with his clear experience in the industry surely not harming Claro's chances of success. And this is not to call out those specific artists, but to remind you that some people get here easier than others. But nestled amidst the stories of privilege and accessibility lies someone like 21-year-old rapper Destroy Lonely. The son of rapper I-20, who was signed by Ludacris in the early 2000s, Destroy Lonely has been musically inclined from an early age and has been making and releasing music since 2015. It disintegrates the nepotism label a bit for him as the clear dedication to the craft and ability to find his style is shown through the progression of his music's quality. And having released music since 2015, it wasn't like Destroy Lonely just had one single pop off and that's what made him what he was. Granted, there is Bane and that definitely helped him, but that was on the TikTok front, which obviously has a lot of label integration of pushing songs out. But I think what we saw with something like Bane was a very specific song becoming popular because it's good and because it's a good song for people to make trends to and just take six or even 15 seconds out of and make a viral video out of that. Lonely did get some exposure to the industry early on though, touring with his father in Ludacris and even referring to Luda as his uncle in an Our Generation music interview. But instead of prying for ways to attain clout from his valuable connections, he became a student of the game and the industry as well, as he was homeschooled in his middle school years and used that time to learn programs like Pro Tools and Ableton, and that early familiarity and nuance clearly lends itself to his style developing over time. Several collaborations and years later, Lonely found himself working with people near him and even making a tape with an artist named Nezis, rightfully titled Nezis Destroyed. And from this point on, Lonely seemed to learn ways to navigate the industry and find his footing in whatever subgenre he sees fit. And you know, sure, he might have had more access to these rooms and these places where he can build himself and get great advice and nuance and watch people work professionally in the areas that he wants to. But the flip side of it is he was putting in the work. He was not a relatively known artist early on, despite the popularity that was behind his father's name, even though that was about a decade prior. But fast forward to 2020 and he's recording a tape and creates the song Oh Yeah, which is not only a Destroy Lonely staple, but is the one that got him noticed by Cardi. From there, Ken Carson and Lonely started hitting the studio together, eventually integrating him as one of the big three on Opium, with the other two obviously being Ken Carson and Playboy Cardi. But over the past year, it's been relative silence from Destroy Lonely with a handful of performances on the Narcissist Tour, Rolling Loud performance, and a new single and a feature with BK The Ruler, but that's kind of it. And it might sound like a lot and sort of like, okay, he did a lot of things, but you know, for an up and coming artist, it's, it's definitely less than expected, especially for somebody who's been teasing his tape no stylist for almost a year now. But that all comes to a halt tonight as he drops the no stylist tape. Strangely enough, there is no promo for this, not even a giant billboard with a social media announcement like we saw from Ken Carson. But you know, that's sort of the, the opium way of announcing things on social media. It's kind of not announcing them at all, teasing them and not delivering, but in Destroy Lonely's case, releasing with silence. Maybe it's because of Lone's ability to go viral with tracks on TikTok, and I mean, Bane has a whopping 50,000 videos under its official sound, and that doesn't even include the hundreds of thousands used from sped up, slowed down, reverbed versions that people make on TikTok. And that helps the bottom line for Destroy Lonely, even if it's not quite apparent early on. There's also word of mouth, which is obviously an insanely powerful marketing tool, and specifically within social media where various media pages will likely post about the mixtape pre or post release. And you know, we've seen some already uh, posting about, you know, the, the track list and people hearing it in other countries. So it's definitely building up anticipation the day of within its core audience. And I think it's good to have outlets and, you know, media personalities talk about albums 
after their release. You know, not not making it a giant hype thing like, oh, they're dropping their album tonight. Okay, it comes and goes. Who's next week? You know, I think Destroy Lonely's case is like, okay, this rapper never drops. And now he's dropped and we probably won't hear from him again. He's on tour. He's on Cardi's opium label. There's a lot of markers that make him an artist to look out for and listen to. And so I think we're going to be seeing some sort of coverage of this for a while, I hope. An online promo runs very deep. It can also go deep into your pockets as well. But even with all of that, it's still a bit of a shock to see just no promo at all. And I think, you know, barely a post from him. We got something from Spotify, but not much. At the same time, though, maybe that's the whole point to deliver something with no speculation, drama or press. You know, he's still a young artist and maybe he wasn't ready to do the rollout of all these interviews and other things, especially considering that he did a lot of that last year. Just like with Ken Carson, it's impossible to ignore the pure influential power behind Destroy Lonely being Playboy Cardi and his opium label. But the intentionally hands-off approach from Cardi towards these two and the other up-and-comers on the label is almost a test of sorts. You get to borrow some of his sounds, aesthetical appeal, weirdness and sort of obscurity on social media, and you can garner some portions of Cardi's fan base and get to perform in front of them. But none of this is stated out loud by Cardi or his affiliates, and that's sort of the power of it, is the fans do it. It's done by the fans themselves as if they're almost journalists or media personalities whenever they find something new of, oh, this leaked video in the studio sees Cardi talking to this person or that person or having this person in the studio, you know, it creates buzz. And granted, the media outlets do cover it, but usually when it's newsworthy within the hip hop space. And bringing Lone on the Narcissist Tour proved that he definitely snagged a healthy slice of Cardi's fans to give him a try. And also having such a viral hit like Bane definitely helps get the crowd hype for at least a portion of your performance, giving you a guaranteed slot of confidence. But continuously getting chances to perform for crowds both large and small, the No Stylist rapper seems to be more ready than ever to show wider audiences what he's capable of. So I do, I now understand why we didn't hear much new music from Destroy Lonely up until this point, because, you know, on first listen, I'm, I'm really liking this tape, just especially from an experimental front of trying so many different things and being vulnerable in that aspect. Everything from the, you know, the beat selections to Lone's ability to switch up his flows, but not lose the catchy cadence and adapting to the beats of sorts. It made the songs hit harder than I think that they would have otherwise, which is almost an issue I have with Ken Carson's X, where it's like these beats are so good. You know, Ken's almost struggling to keep up in terms of having anything interesting to say or having a more engaging flow or sort of adapting and changing that over time you know there's a lot more here than i was honestly expecting you know at 19 songs it is a little long but no no song really overstayed its welcome in my mind and it gets off to a really insane start and doesn't really have any interludes or even a semblance of a break in its pace or momentum. You know, the sonic styles and influences web and flow throughout it. There's always a sense of immediacy for each track. I'd say, you know, you never really get, like I said, a chance to get ready for it. It just kind of goes in and, and kicks it off. But, you know, the first third of this tape really struck me as very deliberate. Like none of these, it seemed like the sequencing on this too, it, it was so good because as as it goes on you know the instrumentals switch up a bit in terms of a stylistic front just a sonic front too on on the mixing end with new synth thrown in and there's definitely sort of this dreary kind of dark grimacing vibe to all of it and it's hard to nail this tape down stylistically to like one or two things because it, it just does so many different things the 8-bit synth melodies on no stylus and turn it up feel perfectly done and like i said the sequencing is so good that you know stuff hits when it needs to hit and it doesn't overstay its welcome about halfway through the tape though it slowly but surely morphs into a punk trap tape for a bit by more way of instrumental than anything else though you know i liked seeing him experiment throughout the tape but the beauty of experimentation is seeing what works and seeing what doesn't and i think some tracks like make it stop and dangerous needed more from lone himself to sort of back up what the instrumental was giving and you know even when the instrumentals were dynamic and had a couple things going on in the mix there was still this just sort of ear ringing uh melody that just kept repeating itself over and over and that repetitious feeling really set in for me and granted i could give it more listens and i and i should but part of it almost makes me not want to because there's not enough happening from destroy lonely 
to make it worth that. But for the last three songs, he gets comfortable with the beats and they feel right at home for this ethereal style that he's been going for, not only on this mixtape, but you know, in his career as a whole. It feels like the culmination of that style. Muffled electric guitar strings float in the background on the track on the floor, but they don't overshadow the synths or drums. And it, it, it feels new and it feels like he's tried other things out before this and has given us what he sees as the best version of it. And the last song, Veteran with Ken Carson, it feels like a trap song out of the Saw universe. And not only because the melody is this sort of ringing chainsaw or, or something going on, he goes as hard as possible on that and doesn't hold back. You know, one of my complaints with Destroy Lonely before this was, I think I thought he would strain his voice too much and it would never fit with the autotune. And this, he creeps up just to the plateau of where it would be bad and stops. Mario, right, just do what you gotta do, bro. Cause once you get 18, it's probably gonna be too late. And if your parents say you can't do it and you wanna do it, you should do it. Cause they gonna hold you back. But here we are now. The two highly awaited releases for both Ken and Destroy Lonely are here. And the two have just embarked on a nationwide tour together and they'll get a chance to show their already dedicated audiences why it's worth sticking around for another year or so for the next mixtape, album, or even collaborative piece of work between the two opium leaders that are reigning over their niche in the trap genre and are doing so with unmistakable bravado, confidence, and style. Thank you for watching. Um, you know, I, I love this. There's something about series and I'm going to continue it. Please let me know what artists you want me to do next down in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And yeah, I'll see you soon. And more interviews and more video essays are on the way. Thank you.